trade for one is around 400 or 350, somewhere in between there. I don't remember the exact number. The main point is that minoxidil has. What is up guys and welcome back. So today we are gonna talk about topical RU58841 and gyno. Mainly because some of you had asked on my channel and I see it on Reddit and different forums if RU58841 can cause gyno. Now the problem is that there aren't any studies on RU58841 since it was dropped and it wasn't taken up at any point. So first off, I think it is at least important to explain why some people think that IU58841 can cause gyno and how it is able to cause gyno. If we just look at the basics, because gyno can be caused by a myriad of different things, there's androgens and estrogens. Now one thing that can cause gyno if is, is if you have way too much estrogen going around your body or estrogenic compounds and a little too low androgenic, or at least just a normal androgenic weight, but way too high estrogenic. This is the first way. This is where estrogen becomes dominant. If you have normal test niveau or anything like that, it can cause gyno in that way. There's a second way that it can cause gyno. Namely, as I just mentioned, when estrogen is the dominant hormone in that axis, usually at that point it can cause gyno and for most men that will be the case. Now the other thing that can happen is if you have way too little androgenic response, or activity or whatever we call it, then once again, estrogen is the major hormone in that system. Now, if you take IU58841, it is what's called an antagonist. An antagonist blocks the receptor from doing its thing. So when it blocks the androgen receptor, of course, your hormones can do their thing in your body. Namely, you will be less androgenic and then estrogen will become the, becomes the dominant hormone in that axis making it able to create a gyno because androgens can do their job. So there are two ways, as I just said, you can have too high estrogens or too low androgens. If IU58841 goes systemic, it has the potential from blocking all your androgen receptors and hence making estrogen the dominant hormone in that axis, as I just said, and in that way it can, of course, cause a gyno. So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna extrapolate from other studies. Mainly, we have some studies on minoxidil. So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna take a look at this study from 1989. And it's about minoxidil and the absorption rate and if it goes systemic when applied daily as it is supposed to be used in the common praxis. Now, I wanna sum it up quickly. Minoxidil wasn't showing any significant outlet in the systemic absorption, meaning that it didn't go systemic at any point. Now, if we compare minoxidil to IU58841, there are some parameters that we can extrapolate some data from. The first part is that minoxidil has a way lower Dalton than IU58841. I think minoxidil has somewhat between 250 Dalton while minoxidil is around, uh, I mean, while IU58841 is around 400 or 350, somewhere in between there. I don't remember the exact number. The main point is that minoxidil has a lower Dalton. So to explain Dalton very simply is that Dalton is the size of the molecule and the size somewhat determines if it can pass the skin. And if it can pass the skin, it can pass other stuff in the body. So of course, the lower Dalton, the lower the molecule and the easier it will go systemic. So not all molecules are created equally, but Dalton is a very significant parameter when talking about absorption. This is also why we have this rule of thumb that anything above 500 and Dalton can pass the skin. This also, of course, is applied to if it can go systemic. The lower the Dalton, the higher the risk of going systemic. So we can already extrapolate that since minoxidil didn't go systemic, well, there isn't much evidence or much facts that will lead to suggesting that IU58841 with a way higher Dalton will also go systemic. The next part is the half-life. So another factor when going systemic is that although that it can go systemic, it will take some time. Now the half-life is of course how long it stays in the body, 
The longer it stays in the body, the way further it will pass through the different layers. And once again, minoxidil has a half-life about, I think it was about 22 hours. And IU5881 has only a half-life of about one hour, but it will metabolize into a different compound with a half-life of about 19 hours, which give a total of 20 hours of half-life in the body. Once again, it is lower in this parameter than minoxidil, meaning it will stay less time in the body and hence have way less time to go systemic. So if we look at these facts, we can already extrapolate from this that it has a higher dalton, meaning that it takes a lot more time for IU58841 to pass just the skin and the, and the other different mechanisms in the body for it to go systemic. And also it is in the body a less time than minoxidil. So if we take a look at these facts, we can extrapolate or at least assume that IU58841 doesn't have the capabilities to go systemic when we compare to minoxidil and compare to the study where minoxidil didn't go systemic and minoxidil has better capabilities for going systemic compared to IU5841. Now this isn't a finite answer since not, not all molecules are created equally and this is why there usually is a lot of studies behind stuff before we use it. And we can never know for sure before we have some studies on real life human beings where we can see if IU58841 actually does something completely different than we expected it to. So guys, my assumption is IU58841 cannot cause gyno, but there is the potency for it to cause some other stuff and can cause gyno via some other ways that we don't know about. But the systemic way for it to do it is not very likely if we compare it to minoxidil and hold it up with the study that I just showed. And guys, once again, you are doing experiments with your own body with a substance you don't know much about. So please take care and you're never guaranteed anything. This is also why we see in, even on painkillers that they have an extensive list of different kinds of side effects that it can have because not all men react the same way to different stuff. So my assumption is it cannot cause gyno, but we will never know for sure. And it is a risk we have to take. And with that said, until next time, cheers. <laughs>